Today's video is sponsored by the team over at CoinLedger.io. Tax season is just around the corner and the team at CoinLedger.io is here to help. CoinLedger.io has made tax reporting easy for crypto mining enthusiasts. Get this. In a few easy steps, you can have CoinLedger.io pull your crypto wallet transactions and generate a tax report. Then just supply that tax report to your tax guy or import straight into TurboTax. Bam, bam, thank you, ma'am, you're done. I have partnered with CoinLedger.io to offer this entirely free to the community, as well as CoinLedger.io is also hosting a free giveaway event. Full details and links in the description of today's video. What is going on, miners, and welcome back to the Hobbyist Miner channel. Well, today I am joined by none other than Seb Hesla. What's going on, Seb? Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> doing awesome. So, guys, today we're going to be talking about my crypto mining shed. And I've been chatting a lot about it with Seb. And he had some questions. And I was like, this would be an awesome video to share with the community. So, Seb, are you ready to dive in and talk about my crypto mining shed? Absolutely. I'm looking forward to this. And the sort of role I want to take here is kind of like that of your viewers, right? Because you have built this very elaborate <laughs> contraption for your, your mining, right? Yep. Your mining operation. And I just want to sort of like step into the shoes of someone looking at that from the outside of like, what's going on? What's the purpose? And, and the, the what, why, how, and and when of building a crypto mining shed, right? So Perfect. I have written down a few questions for you here. So should we just get right into it? Just dive in, give it to me. All right, all right. So the very first question that I have for you is, why do you need a mining shed? What's, what's the point of a shed like this for mining? Yeah, that, that's actually a really good question. And I wish I knew what I know now, like two years ago, when I first got into mining. Um, yeah. So, you know, a lot of people that have followed my channel know that I've tried different things. I've done it in my basement. I've done the grow tent. I've done the mining room and all of them got me by, but I very quickly like outgrew those items. Uh, that's the biggest challenge as a home miner is like you outgrow your setups very quickly. Heat's usually the hardest. So for me, why the, why a mining shed in that regard was, and I, I didn't realize it till like I actually had it built was the fact of, wow, mm. like all my rigs are out there. I remember the first day, like I had electricity and I, I wasn't, I couldn't be more excited to get everything out there. And it was the fact of like no noise in my house, no heat at all in my house. And that was the biggest factor. It was like having a dedicated space that didn't affect my home. And I think that's something that like every mm. miner can relate to is, man, if it's not noise, it's the heat that seeps into the rest of your home and affects things. I mean, my basement got to the point where like I had multiple AC guys out because my vents were sweating throughout my home and then destroying drywall and drop ceiling and all that types of stuff because my heat that I was putting off in my mining room, which is so much, it just was affecting everything. So having a separate building was is the best thing in the world honestly yeah so my um my next question is kind of along those lines okay. and you somewhat um replied to it already answered this question already but what because just because i know the your your story <laughs> from you know being sure. i would say friends for yep. the past couple of years right yep. um what I wanted to get to is kind of like, cause you, like you said, have gone through this same journey that I feel a lot of miners take is you, you buy a couple of GPUs and build your first rig and you mine with that. And then as that grows, you start noticing the issues of either heat buildup or noise or, or be it what be it. Right. So then you might move into something like a smaller grow tent. Mm -hmm. And then you outgrow that and then you build some sort of dedicated room for it in your basement or whatever. And then, <laughs> yep. then you outgrow that. And then there always comes the point of like, what's next? And obviously for you, that was a shed. Yep. So do you remember a specific breaking point that made you realize that like, 
no, I, it, it's, it's gotta be a shed. Yeah, I think it was when I was in the process of renovating my basement. I've been doing that over the last two years. I've kind of kept people up to date on that. And when the, the heat from the mining room and, and that mining room has eight, uh, 800 CFM fans. So it's not short on airflow. But the issue is, is just that heat was like, uh, was just impacting the rest of the home. And when it got to the point where the, the, the vents were being affected and it was like damaging the work that I was doing on my basement, my renovating basement, it was just like one of those like, oh crap moments. Like, man, I thought I thought this through. And I think I feel like most miners have this thought of like, I thought this through, I thought it was going to work and then it doesn't work. And you're or like, yeah. it doesn't come out the way yeah. you want. And I feel like that's really common for home miners. Um, unfortunately, you have to learn these things and make the mistakes to really come out the other side. Yeah. And, and that's where the shed came in. So for me, it was, yeah, it was when my home was impacted to the point where like in the winter, I'm got, I got windows open. And like in the summer, my, my, the heat is, yeah. the, the air conditioning is not keeping up. And then I have a family here and my wife and everything. And it's like, man, it's just, it's all compounding. Yeah. To the point where it's like, okay, do I spend the money? Um, and uh, yeah, w and once you pull that trigger, y you don't go back. But uh, I'm so thankful I did. Yeah, I I think you um you made a good point there too of like you you almost gotta make these mistakes yourselves. Mm -hmm. But that is also the point of why we make these videos, right? Yeah. And why we yeah. share our journey. That yep. hopefully you know some of you watching might see us make those mistakes and not have to make them yourselves. Yep. Um, so yeah, learn, learn from our mistakes. Um, do you, do you think what you've accomplished with your shed can be done in other ways, either through dedicated rooms or grow tents or, you know, any, any other solution, or do you think that it's like it, it, nothing can really compare to the, the dedicated shed. I think um, I could have gotten by like when I was thinking back through our conversation on like, okay, was there an opportunity where there was a step in between that could have gotten by was actually like my first grow tent was pretty small. Um, and uh, Chump Change XD actually got one of those like massive grow tents and almost was like a, and there's actually even bigger ones looking back. Um, and, and this will lead to the question of, you know, not doing my mining room and doing a larger grow, like just keeping it opened up in my basement and doing a larger grow tent like that. So you have dedicated space. The grow tent does a pretty good job of sealing it in. I never had issues with like mine, like that heat leaking into the rest of the home and stuff. The, gr the grow tent did a good job of keeping it isolated. Um, I, I think that could have been a step for me between the two um, before I got to the shed, you know, as an option. But the mining room was one of my biggest mistakes and one of my most expensive mistakes. And I wish I went and went from grow, like small grow tent to big grow tent, like chump change, and then to shed, um, just the amount of money. I mean, that mining room when all said and done with labor, everything was probably $5,000. And now it's a closet full of yeah. like stuff. That's not like mining hardware. Uh, I'm even thinking about like gutting out the inline fans and like disabling the electric and everything. Cause it's like, I'm never going to go back to a mining room ever ever it just it didn't work yeah uh, and it was worth a try but it just it didn't work and that room i thought i thought of everything it's got half inch uh insulated foam board behind all the drywall we have you know there's eight 800 cfm in there total like all those fans that are in there there's 330 amp 240 volts so it's like i thought i thought of everything i got you know the ducts and the ceiling and everything like that but at the end of the day it just it affected my home too much. And so th that was one of my biggest mistakes as a home miner. Yeah. So just, just getting into specifics, mm. what exactly about the mining room was mm. it that didn't work in the end? Because as you yeah. say, on paper, it really seems like it should work. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's uh, the fact of, you know, with a shed, it's just a box, a wooden box. And the sound, mm. you know, was one thing, not a huge deal. You know, I, I, at the time I built it, there wasn't a lot of ASICs and stuff, but you know, it was that airflow, like out there, um, I'm pulling in cold air. Well, that's what I had in my mining room. So, okay, I got the cold air. So check, like, great, whatever. Airflow is good and everything. But with the mining shed, 
you know, the heat can go ahead and can seep out of that mining shed and it's okay. It just, it dissipates, right? What happens in my home, in my mining room, when like I thought I had everything good to go, it just seeps out and affects mm. the rest of the house, even though it's like sealed up. Like it's pretty sealed. I mean, I'm not going to say it's airtight in any way, shape or form. Like that's not the way it is. Um, but I, I think it's just because of the fact of like one, it's in the basement. So when that uh, heat comes out, it's just seeping upward. And then like there's actually an yeah. air conditioning duct right above that to feed my living room. That's disabled. I've disabled that back at the supply yeah. because that was the first thing where it was just like cold air and the warmth and stuff like that. So I think it's, even though I think I thought of everything with like the, the, the heat coming out of it and I'm like, great, I got this great airflow. It's still like, it's okay that it, it kind of spews a little bit and stirs in my shed. Uh, that's okay because yeah. it, it has an easy way to dissipate, but in your home, it, it's, it's a box inside of a box, you know? Um, so that was the yeah. downside. Yeah, so like the the way I think about it is kind of like with having it inside of your home, like or rather having it in a shed. You know, you're you're pumping some of, of the hot air out with your your yep. um, exhaust fans, right? But like the other heat that just naturally seeps mm -hmm. out through the walls and and yep. and roof or whatever of the shed, like that's just fine. Whereas with containing that within your house that that heat sort of like that background seep of heat yeah. gets into your, your home yep so probably you you need to either have use like way more exhaust mm -hmm. um coming out of it which then more electricity more expensive right which isn't really worth it and yeah. there's not even anything to say that you would be able to spun all that heat exactly out through the exhaust fans anyway mm -hmm. so yeah that, that's just kind of how i interpret that and, and why the um the shed is just a better way to go there um yep. and and kind of on this note of like mistakes mm -hmm. like w for the people who want to go down the route of a shed mm -hmm. what are some sort of like mistakes that are easy to make that you can like help them avoid. Yeah, so uh, I thought with the shed, I thought of everything. And now I'm a, a year into the shed and uh, I've kind of maxed out the shed. Um, and so it's like one of those like, mm -hmm. man, like type of deal. So I think for me, it was two things. One was um, space. You know, I went with like a really small shed because I think I never imagined that I would grow, you know, like at, at the pace that I have mm -hmm. with my hardware. And so I, it was like, oh, I'm just going to get these. I'll be good. And now I'm like, man, like I'm already looking to expand into my garage. So um, go bigger. Like everybody I talk to, uh, I have a mining shed channel on my Discord. So there's a lot of guys in there that are either getting into it or already doing it. And it's just space. Like I honestly, I probably should have doubled the size of my shed. But that comes with a price tag, um, which mm. is always hard to swallow. I think on top of that is electric. Like I've maxed out 330 amp 240 volt in there. I probably should have gone even more, uh, but I didn't anticipate us to pivot towards an ASIC mining kind of uh, norm versus, you know, uses more electric versus mm -hmm. like GPU mining. Um, I did well with the airflow. Like the airflow was one thing where like I have four massive shutter fans in there. I run one, but like, okay, I'll take that. I'll take that win where I struggled so much with my mining room that I went overboard on airflow and I'm thankful. Like, great i'd rather have too much than not enough yeah. um so yeah i think really space and electric were my two biggest mistakes that when people think they have enough like think of it like a year or two down the road if you keep at your current pace are you going to be good or not um so that was something i really should have doubled and now i'm like okay like i can run another line for electric but i can't really like do that with a sh like do i build another shed and I've already told myself I won't. Yeah. Like I won't build, like I'm in a neighborhood guys. Like my neighbors are like all around me. It's yeah. not like, if I was secluded, like yeah. I know a lot of miners, they're out in the boonies or they're on a, a private lot, nobody around them, go ham. Like I, I would have doubled, tripled the size of my shed, but cost is always a factor. And that's always the hard part. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, with, with the size, just um, th there are multiple constraints there. Like you could either, physically make the shed too small or you could 
go too small on the ex like the airflow mm -hmm. or you could go too small on the amount of power uh that you you pull in there and like you say you can always kind of add more airflow you can always add more yeah. electricity it's really hard to add more physical space yeah. once the shed is actually built yep um so for for you are there any sort of space optimizations you could do? Like, do you have some open air rigs you could fit into server cases to save on some space? Could you stack some of those like vertically instead of horizontally? You know what I mean? Like, like, or no, it's a great it question. Like, you really hit your, your peak there. Yeah. I mean, um, in the video I previously did the other week where I talked a little bit more about the design, like that was one thing I thought about was like airflow, like intake in one side, exhaust out the other there. It's one straight stream of airflow. We're not messing around. And that forced me to kind of have this rack in the middle. I've seen some people do racks around the outside, but then like rigs are facing each other and stuff. And it's just, you're optimized for space, but not for airflow. Like it's, it's kind of hard, but, uh, with what you had said, I did go server cases on the bottom of my racking, which worked out well, but now like I have one slot left available and then I have this like X12 that doesn't fit anywhere. It's like too big. So it's like in the doorway as you jump in. But other than that, the open air rigs, um, yes, moving those to server cases, it's all about density. Like now where my mind goes is like density and efficiency. Um, so it's like, okay, what can I, you know, I have a few, two open air rigs. They're just kind of sitting in there on the floor. Uh, those need to go like the, they got to get into server cases. Um, so I finding I have a news for those. Now I've also looked at moving some of those to my garage and doing massive shelving in the garage. And then an open frame would work um, in the meantime, because I have them, you know, they're significantly cheaper than going with the server cases, uh, but it's all, it's all about that density. So uh, yeah, I mean that, that, that's kind of, I, I think that's the best way to go is like, if you're going with a shed server cases are a good Avenue to go. Um, there's pros and cons. Like some people may go with like, oh, if I do an open airframe, then it's going to get more airflow. Well, the benefit is for me is like the server cases really help out with that air. Like the server case is pretty much a shed at the end of the day. It's at the intake and the exhaust. And then my shed just replicates it. So it keeps them, it keeps airflow over the cards versus if your cards are in open airframes, you're relying on the shed's airflow to keep it entirely cool. So uh, there's benefits to both sides of it. Uh, I, there's a lot of like yeah. those AliExpress and those cheap server cases that you can buy now that are significantly cheaper uh, during the bear market. So I've thought about buying up a few of them and, and they're not like the Ferrari of server cases like an Octominer, but they don't have to be. Like they're serving a purpose. The, the cost is minimal. Um, yeah, if you're looking at a, a shed or you're thinking about a shed, those watching, consider heavily server cases, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just on, on that note of server cases, I want to throw in like it's it's all about what you need from your server case too. Yeah. You know those cheap ones on AliExpress, they do the job. You know, yeah. But they're not gonna have things like you know automatically controlling the fan speed based on your GPU temperatures. Yeah. You know you're gonna have yeah. to just set them at a hundred percent if that's what's needed, or set them at eighty percent, or you know, and yep. they're not gonna have you know, at the wall power measuring and they're not mm -hmm. going to have environmental sensors. And it, it's all just about what you need. And they obviously aren't going to have like what warranty if yeah, anything correct. breaks they're, down. Or, yeah, you know, yeah, they're, they're super. Or... Yeah, they're super inexpensive yeah. now. I mean, I've been um, looking at them and everything and they're, yeah. they're, they're super cheap. So uh, it's a great avenue to go even to get you in the door. Um, I mean, open frames look nicer. Yeah. Let's be honest here. They look great. You know, you got one behind you there. They look awesome to see, but at the end of yeah. the day, you got to think about utility. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, any other mistakes that come to mind that are easy to make and also kind of easy to avoid? Um, I, I think it's really for me was the space and electric, like there's three categories. It's space, yeah. electric and airflow. Like when you're looking at a crypto mining shed, those are the most important things. Everything else is extra, like the yeah. flooring that I did, like you could, you could stick with just the, you know, the, the untreated wood, if you wanted to, you could, you know, do whatever, but that was really the big one. Those three things were really the yeah. three things that are like the staples when you're looking at a crypto mining shed. If you can base all of your decisions around like what's best and expandability, I think then you'll avoid mistakes uh, at this point. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, the mistake I can think of 
is like have a good like plan everything out yeah. and break down the costs beforehand so that you you don't you know you think like oh i have you know four thousand dollar budget for this and then you burn through your four thousand dollars and you're no way near finished you you don't even have electricity in the shed and yeah. you're out of money like make sure you you plan everything out before you start so that you know that you can afford it and also so you have a good idea of what it's going to cost so that you can know if that's actually worth it for you or not yeah i mean uh i was i was i mean i did a lot of it myself uh, a lot of the things in the shed i did myself not everybody's going to go that avenue um, but i feel like that's the best way to go like to save some money is doing it yourself yeah. doesn't mean it's going to take longer yes i mean from the time that my shed got delivered to the time that like it was to where it is now was months but i also it was little things at a time and added stuff and things like that I, I think the biggest expense there that people overlook is the electrical i mean my supplies for my electrical were mm -hmm. 1400 but the, the install cost probably would have cost me three to four thousand dollars while said and done so it's like man that's a huge amount of money. So yeah, planning it out, like Seb said, is a really smart move to do. I tried to plan mine start to finish. So I knew what my intake was gonna look like, my exhaust, where my electrical was gonna be. Like I tried to, but just like you do with any other mining project, you always assume you think you're gonna, you know, you think you got it, you planned for it. And then, you know, it doesn't turn out the way you want, unfortunately. And that's with everything. Yeah. Everything mining is exactly that way. Just, yeah. You can't just pull extension cords out of your shed. You <laughs> no. gotta have it properly no. installed. Yeah, hundred percent. Right, I 100%, think that 100%. is all I have for you. No, I appreciate it. Uh, I, I, my goal of this video, guys, was to just provide you a fun, open format. And I told Seb, don't give me the questions ahead of time. Like I want them to be yeah. natural and come up with them uh, on the fly, which was good. So Seb, I appreciate you joining me today. Guys, uh, hopefully you guys got something from this. That was my whole goal was to give back to the community. And if you guys have questions, comments, concerns, um, leave them down below. Uh, I'd, I'd love to respond to you guys and uh, provide you guys as much information as I can so you don't make the mistakes that I did, but also can see the value of going with a crypto mining shed. I'll leave a link down below to this guy right here. Go check out his channel. He has some good content coming around the corner. And if you guys enjoyed today's video, give it one of these and I'll see you next time. Take care. Today's video is sponsored by crypto.com. As a home crypto miner, it is crucial to have your cryptocurrency at your fingertips and the crypto.com app can help. Being able to send and receive cryptocurrency quickly, easily, and on the go is a must have in 2023. The Crypto.com app allows you to utilize your cell phone as a gateway into the crypto world, no matter where you are. No matter if you're looking to buy, sell, send, or receive crypto on the go, the Crypto.com app has you covered. If you're looking to liquidate your mined crypto often, you can set your GPU mining rigs and ASIC miners to mine directly to your Crypto.com wallet making it simple and easy to cash out quickly. Download the Crypto.com app today and give it a try. No harm in testing it out, poking around and seeing if the Crypto.com app fits your hobbyist miner needs. Guess what? Use the link in today's video description to support the hobbyist miner entirely free.